Hello, welcome to the fifth episode of Implementing Exceptions with Ruby. My name is Erlang Wilkinson of Ten Pines, and remember that we are implementing a new model for exceptions in the Ruby language. On the last episode, we implemented a test where we verified that if we throw an exception and that exception is not handled, the handler not found strategy will be evaluated. Before uh, continue with our to do uh, there are some changes that I want to do uh, because I remember that we could implement these things a little bit better. The first one is related to the fact that we are using lazy initialization to initialize the handler not found strategy, and we can avoid doing that defining the handler not found strategy the first time that we define the class. If we do this and run the test, we can see that all the tests are still running. Well, really we are not testing that the default handler uh, not found strategy is uh, being evaluated. That's something that is very hard to test and we will see that later on the episode. Another change that I would like to make is the implementation of the handle method has some code that is repeated. Here we have the to return closure call, and we could put that in one place. So let's say that as a result of the if, we will set the, the variable result and the return closure is going to be called only once after that. Okay, let's see now if it runs. It's running, so okay, we have this the test running, so we can go and see what else we have to do. Uh, I added some new to-dos. The first one is related with the smell. We still have that smell that is related to the issue that we're using class instance variable. Now we're using that also for the exception to handle class and the handle not found strategy in the unhandled exception class. Uh, we have a new to-do that is related to the second one that that is uh, that we should be able to implement nested handlers and also as I said a little bit after uh, before sorry we should test that the default handler not found strategy is set the first time that we are not uh, when we are not defining a handler not found strategy but it, that is a little bit hard to test, so we're not going to do it right now. What we're going to do now is the third to-do that is related to the second one, and you will see that it's going to, you know, um, show us some interesting things. So, what we want to do now is to be able to say that Remember that we are not worrying about the name of the test, so what we want to have is nested handlers. So let's create a handler first that is going to be evaluated if we throw the exception new exception. But instead of throwing of handling new exception, sorry, we are going to handle and handle exception. You will see why. This is a trick that we're using and in the exception handler we want to get our famous object too. So the result of evaluating this code should be two and we don't want the handler not found strategy to be evaluated so we will send a message flank if that happens. So let's see again the test. We create a handler for unhandled exception that returns two, and inside the block for that handler, we create another handler for the class new exception subclass, and then we throw the exception new exception. Let's see what happens if we run the test. Well, test number four fails, and that's because this message flank is being sent. Uh, and that's okay because we don't have right now the possibility to have nested handlers. But let's see what's going on. Let's debug a little bit and let's see what happened. Okay, here we have our first message send of call handling 
where we set the current handler, the return closure, and the exception to handle class. After doing that, remember that we are saving those objects in class instance variables, we evaluate the receiver of the call handling message that again sends the message called handling. So here, when we set the current handler, that is going to override the handler that we saved in the previous uh, message send of the message called handling. So that is why it's not working. It's always getting the last handler set in those methods. And that's because we are using class instance variables and we have to get rid of them. So, uh, I don't know if you notice, but these three objects are always together. So it looks like there is so cohesion between them and maybe we can reify the concept that they are representing. And the concept that they are representing is what we can call an exception handler. So if we move these three objects to a, to a new one called exception handler, we will be able to remove these class instance variables and we are going to be able to do more things. Uh, so let's start doing that. First let me remove the creation of the return closure to a, to a variable and let's call it return continuation instead of return closure. That's a better name because return closure is uh, it has the type of the object that is represent, representing the variable uh, instead of uh, having the role return continuation is a better name because that's the role of that object in this context. Let's see if everything keeps working. Well, test number four is not working, I forgot that. And if you make changes to your design, all the tests should be working. That's a rule on TDD. And that's because if you make a change and you have tests that are failing, you can make a mistake in the change and you won't know it because you have tests that are failing. So let's rename the test so it doesn't run. Okay, and now we have the three tests that are working. We can continue with the change now. Uh, and the change that we want to make is to create the exception handler class that is going to reify the concept of the three objects together. So we have to pass the exception class, the handler, and the return continuation to it when we create it. Let's now define the exception handler class in such a way that the initialize receive the exception class the handler and the return continuation and let's set that let's see what happens okay we are having all this error because current handler is not defined on exception handler class that's correct because it's in proc so we should remove all these methods from proc to exception handler see what happens now the handle method is not implemented in PROC and that's true because now it's on exception handler. Let's run the test. Okay, now they are all running again. You can see how TDD works. You make changes step by step, one by one, and you rely on the test for the mistakes that you can make instead of thinking about the whole um, impact of the change that you are making. Okay, so now the class proc is smaller, it defines only one method, the call handling, and the exception handler is the one that is doing the whole thing. But uh, we're still using class instance variables, so let's get rid of them. Let's make this uh, instance variables in, instead of class instance variables, so we have to define these methods as uh, instance methods okay let's run the test and see what happens okay handle is not defined in exception handler and that's true because we just 
make it as an instance method. So let's define handle as a class method that receives an exception. And what could do now? We are creating the exception handler, but we are not saving it anywhere. Here we are creating it, but we are not keeping that. So let's, just for now, have another class instance variable. Let's call it again current exception handler. And we can send the message handle now to it. Remember that it's an exception handler, it's not a, a proc anymore. And we have to set that exception handler. And we're going to do a nasty stuff. Let's do it here in the initialize. Current exception handler self. OK, so now let's define that method. Def self current exception handler equals an exception handler and that is going to set the class instance variable current exception handler okay cool let's see if the test runs yes and all tests are running we did a as I said a nasty thing here we are setting a class instance variable inside the initialize we could do it in the new method but this is just a hack for all the tests to run and you may wondering okay we get rid of all of those uh, class instance variables in proc but now we have another one in uh, the exception handler class and yes that is true but we have one not three so we are better now and we will continue working on this smell you will see that but before uh, doing other things I would like to do some refactorings one of them that I think is very important is to realize that the exception handler should not be any uh, a mutable object it shouldn't change I mean it's not a good idea uh, for other objects to change for example the current handler or the uh, return closure of the exception handler nasty things could happen if we allow that so this uh, the exception handler object should be immutable and that's what we're going to do uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use some refactorings and make the inline uh, we're going to inline the uh, current handler return closure methods uh, inside class so we don't uh, we don't have those methods anymore yes uh, and this one too these are refactoring so we are sure that uh, the code is still running and remember that the inline refactoring removes the methods in this case that are being inline but just to be sure let's run all the tests okay there was a problem here why Oh, well, I don't know why the uh, refactoring browser, the refactoring is doing that. This is the first thing I see this on the uh, Ruby mine. Let's remove that. Okay, now it's running. Cool. So, uh, what we need to do now uh, is uh, to rename some of these variable names. I don't like them. Like, for example, current handler doesn't make sense to be to to have the current on it so let's rename it just to handler okay let's see if everything is working fine yeah return closure well again closure is not a good name for this variable because it's the type of the object that is in the name of the variable so let's rename it to return continuation cool an exception to handle class I think that's that's a good name so let's run all the tests all the tests are running so we got rid of uh, that smell so now let's see 
if we can run test number four and see what happened. Well, it's still not running, and the problem is that we are not creating that list of exception handlers that we talked about a few minutes ago. So, but I think that's enough for this episode. We had we we got rid of this smell, so let's move it to done. We still have a design smell for the handler not found strategy. And I think that's all we can do for this episode. It's already too long, so let's review the conclusions. From the design point of view, we got rid of the design smell creating the class exception handler. We realized that those three objects were together all the time, so we reified the concept uh, and put those three objects together uh, and we created that concept that it, we call exception handler. Uh, also, we made all instances of exception handler to be immutable, and that's a very important decision because um, having immutable objects uh, is very important because we, we get almost the same benefits of uh, immutability on functional programming languages. Uh, we, we made our design better also, renaming some of the variables. That's very important too. Um, you know, the names of the variables, object, classes, whatever thing that you have to name is very important for the uh, health of your design. And from the TDD point of view, remember that we changed our design step by step. Yes, we, we didn't make all the changes and then we, we run the test, but we made a change, run the test, made a change, run the test. And that's very important because if you make a mistake, uh, going back is easier if you make changes step by step. By step. And we made the changes with all tests running. And remember, that's very important because if you make changes when some tests are not running, you could make mistake and you could make mistakes and could not see them. Okay, so uh, we left the test number four failing, and that's what we are going to um, focus on on the next office and the next episode. So I hope to see you there.